Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, it is going to rain. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat. And it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? The Gospel of the Lord. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. Wait a second. That's not the kind of talk we expect to hear from you, Jesus. Did the angels announcing your birth say that your coming was good news of great joy and peace on earth? What about that? These days we need peace in our world, not more division. We yearn for the day when war is no more. We're worn out by the ongoing bickering between the left and the right and those who hold differing opinions on a wide array of issues. Aren't you supposed to bring peace, not division? It's enough to make a preacher want to look for another text to preach in. Well, Isaiah sings a love song about a gardener's love and care for a vineyard that he's planted? Maybe that would be a better text for today. But even after planting choice vines and preparing to turn a fruitful harvest into fine wine, the gardener becomes frustrated and disappointed that his vineyard only produces rotten, sour grapes. So the gardener tears down its walls that it might become a wasteland, overgrown with briars and thorns and dried up by drought. And then comes the punchline, that the Lord of hosts is the gardener, and the house of Israel and the people of Judah are the vines that were planted. God expected them to produce the fruits of justice and righteousness, but they generated bloodshed and oppression instead. So as it turns out, there's really no good news in this text from Isaiah either. It highlights the division between God and God's people who have not lived out God's ways of justice and love. Once again, I'm, I'm steining and finding some, some good news for us this morning. Well, the easy way out maybe would be to preach about our joining that great cloud of witnesses that we heard in our Hebrews text who persevere and run the race of faithful living, following Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who died and rose again to sit at the right hand of the throne of God. Maybe there's some good news. But that text also highlights the persecution that servants of God will go through. And I'm not one to really take the easy way out. There's got to be some good news that we can rent out of this gospel text this morning. Maybe, just maybe, the, the peace we long for, the true peace that Jesus brings, stirs up division because it contradicts the ways that our world normally operates. 
I wonder if Jesus is warning us that when we seek to follow God's ways of love, advocating for justice of those who are oppressed, and seeking the well-being of all creation, then we too will face division, even perhaps within our own families. And just as Isaiah couches God's judgment in a love song, perhaps we too need to hear Jesus' tough words today as a love song to us, warning us of the cost of discipleship. Conflict and division will be part of the package of following Jesus. Avoiding inevitable conflict will inhibit needed change. Divisions can be destructive, leading not only to broken relationships, but even physical harm. Yet conflict can also sow seeds of creativity and generate positive transformation. I think this is at the heart of Jesus saying that he came to bring fire and division. For fire transforms a landscape. It can actually be a good thing, a necessary thing. For example, lodgepole pine cones lock in their seeds with a resin coating. Those seeds will remain closed unless they're exposed to the high heat of a forest fire. So fire for the lodgepole pine opens up the seeds of new life. The fire Jesus brings clears away the old and makes ready for something new. Jesus comes to kindle fires of justice. He brings about a new order, not just reversing those who are in and those who are out, those who are up and those who are down, but incinerating such categories altogether. Are we ready to let that fire burn through us? How might God's fire of justice already be burning? You know, even facing the truth of our history can be divisive. Some people advocate the way to keep peace in a family is to avoid talking about religion or politics. They seek peace by avoiding hot button issues. And some people even think this is a good policy for congregations as well. But avoidance of potential difference ultimately prevents us from experiencing life-giving change. Yes, avoiding conflict may mean avoiding justice. If we seek to follow in Jesus' footsteps, seeking the healing of this world, then we too will face division. Jesus brought into the light those who were on the fringes and in the shadows of society. His teaching, his healings, his sharing meals with sinners didn't bring peace but division. The Pax Romana, the, the peace of Rome of Jesus' day was really no peace at all. Dependent as it was on the military might of empire to maintain the up-down order of society. But Jesus dared to confront it. And today he dares all who bear the sign of the cross on their brow to join him in this ongoing struggle, to join in kindling these fires of change. Keep in mind that those seeking justice will always face resistance from those who believe that they have something to lose. Uh, they'll be told, don't rock the boat. This is just the way things are. Change takes time. I'm reminded of the, the letter that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. wrote from the Birmingham jail. In response to religious leaders who for the cause of, who were, they were for the cause of racial justice, but they were encouraging him to slow down because he was just causing too much division. And so King wrote, I must make two honest confessions to you, my Christian and Jewish brothers. Yeah, there were no hardly, hardly any women clergy back then, but that's, that's another story. He says, first, I must confess that over the past few years, I've been gravely disappointed with the white model. 
I've almost reached the regrettable conclusion that the Negro's greatest stumbling block in his stride toward freedom is not the white citizen's counselor or the Ku Klux Klan, but the white model, who is more devoted to order than to justice, who prefers a negative peace, which is the absence of tension, to a positive peace, which is the presence of justice who constantly says, I agree with you in the goal you seek, but I cannot agree with you in your methods of direct action. Who paternalistically believes he can set the timetable for another man's freedom. Who lives by a mythical concept of time. Who constantly advises the Negro to, to wait for a more convenient season shallow understanding from people of goodwill is more frustrating than absolute misunderstanding from people of ill will. Lukewarm acceptance is much more bewildering than outright rejection. This king really gives it to those who desire a peace that avoids the tension of division necessary to bring justice to fruition. Perhaps you also heard in King's letter that urgency of time. Now is always the time to seek God's ways of justice. And I hear a similar yearning in Jesus' words for us today. He brings fire saying, I wish it were already kindled. He says he has a baptism and it's the baptism of the cross to be baptized with saying, what stress I am under until it is completed. Jesus continues to yearn in and through us for God's kingdom to come on this earth. Yes, we know how to forecast the weather in even more sophisticated ways than in Jesus' day, so we still get it wrong. But we do we know how to interpret our present time? How might God be calling us to seek healing, wholeness, and abundant life for all people and all creatures on this planet? How will we deal with the inevitable tension and division as we answer the call to be advocates for God's vision of abundant life for all? Jesus wants us to recognize today how his message of God's equitable kingdom clashes with the usual ways that the world operates. The division Jesus brings is that very tension between what the gospel demands and our current social, racial, sexual, economic, and patriarchal systems of prejudice and win-lose philosophies. Jesus comes among us this day, bringing a fire of love to burn away the unjust systems of our world. All of us who bear Christ's cross on our brow share in the baptism of his death and resurrection, this ongoing process of renewal, of dying and rising over and over again. When we embody God's reign of love in our lives, we certainly will face conflict and division as old ways are destroyed, making way for something new to arise. Jesus came bringing fire. May it be kindled today in and through us. May the fire of his love fuel our passion for justice. May it so heal and transform this world that, that God so loves that the angels' chorus of peace on earth heard at Jesus' birth can ring true for all. For peace without justice is really no peace at all. Amen.